section 6.1 vectors in the plane. A vector is a directed line segment. It has both magnitude and direction. And so one way you might see it is what we have right here that if you look at this it actually looks like if you remember your definitions from geometry it looks like a ray because remember a ray had like a starting point then it went a certain direction and then it had an arrow at the end so it is kind of like that except a ray goes on forever and the reason a vector is different is because we are showing, hey, this is the direction it's going. That's why the arrow is over here to show the terminal point. But this does not go on forever because this is representing some sort of magnitude. The length of this line is our magnitude, and then the actual direction this line is is the direction part. So we use vectors to represent quantities like velocity and force, which have a magnitude like a number, but they also have a direction um, that will impact things. Anyway, so in physics, if you've taken it or if you are taking it, you've dealt a lot with vectors probably so far. Um, so you may be really good at this already, or um, this might help you in physics or just whatever. So the first thing we've got is called component form. And so if we've got just like this random vector out here in the middle of nowhere where we know the initial point and the terminal point, that's all well and good. But it's really helpful if basically we can move that line and put the initial point at 0, 0. Because if we put it at 0, 0 and then we just talk about what is the terminal point, then it lets us do all kinds of things with vectors. So. In order to do that, we're going to use what the book calls the head minus tail rule. If an arrow, which they use the word arrow, but it's really vector. If a vector has an initial point of x1, y1 and a terminal point of x2, y2, it represents the vector x2 minus x1 comma y2 minus y1. In other words, we're going to take the second point, the terminal point, and subtract the first point from it. Okay. And a couple of things to notice is with vectors, we put these like arrow brackets, I guess you might call them, around it. And that tells us, hey, this is a vector. This is not a point. Okay, otherwise, it'd be really confusing to tell the difference between a vector and a point. So this actual problem says, are the vectors RS and PQ equivalent? And notice we've got this little line with an arrow on top of these to show we are talking about vectors. And the order is important. R has to be our initial point because it's first. S has to be our terminal point because it's second. So if I right here want to work out with, with this R and S here, if I want to work out with these, OK, what is my actual component form of R, S? OK then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the x values. So 0 minus 2, because the second one goes first. And then I'm going to subtract my y values, so negative 1 minus 1. So that gives me 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, and negative 1 minus 1, which is also negative 2. OK, so that is the component form of the vector rs. And that tells me if I put this vector rs at 0, 0 for its initial point, how far is it going out? Well, it's going negative 2 to the left and negative 2 down. If I look at pq, I'm going to subtract the x's, so negative 1 minus 1. And I'm going to subtract the y's, so 2 minus 4. And if I actually work that out, that does give me negative 1 comma negative 2. So these vectors are equivalent. Now, if I had graphed these initially, let's see, the point 2 comma 1 is right here. 0 comma negative 1 is here. And so that was a vector. This is going to be bad. Yep, that's bad. A vector like that. And then if I draw, draw the other one, so 1 comma 4 and negative 1 comma 2 and so connect the dots 
and draw our line. Okay, so if I hadn't really sucked up those lines because I'm trying to draw on a on a computer, um, <laughs> we would be able to see, okay, those look like they're the same. But by putting it into component form and seeing that, hey, these are the literally the exact same vector in component form, um, that's how we would show that. So that's how we get it into component form is basically subtracting our second point minus our first point, and then that lets us compare vectors. Okay, an important part of vectors is the magnitude of a vector. The magnitude is the distance from the initial point to the terminal point. So there's two ways of looking at this. Um, one is, see this little green box? It matches a green box in your book. One is if they give you two points here, then you basically can use the distance formula on it. And by the way, if you see absolute value bars around, this is a bolded V to show that it's a vector, we don't really take the absolute value of a vector that is representing the idea of taking the magnitude of that vector. Okay, so the magnitude of V equals the distance from between those two points. But if we already have it in component form, then that means the initial point is 0, 0, and our second point is whatever that vector is. So if we have it in component form, we're really just doing the Pythagorean theorem on it. Since most of our, if not all of our questions are going to ask us to actually find the component form and then find the magnitude of the vector, really the second formula is going to be the only thing that you need. So this example down here, given that P is that and Q is that, find the component form and magnitude of the vector. So the component form is going to be the second point's x values and the minus the first point's x value, the second point's y value minus the first point's y value. So 3 minus 1 is 2, 10 minus 3 is 7. So the component form of this vector is 2 comma 7. Okay, I'm going to try to introduce this here and just know um, that this is going to come in later on. Another way of, of writing this besides with the arrow brackets is they might throw in some where they use i's and j's. But they might say this is 2i plus 7j. And there's a section where it asks you to write your answers like that. So these are the exact same things. 2 comma 7 and 2i plus 7j are representing the same exact um, vectors. It's just a different way of writing a vector out. So now let's find the magnitude. If 2 and 7 are my x and my y value in component form, I just need to do 2 squared plus 7 squared and then take the square root. So that's going to give me the square root of 53. And since this is this is like a, a practice problem, right? A theory problem. We're not actually doing anything in the real world. We leave that as square root of 53 because that's our most exact answer. If we were in a like a real world situation where we were finding velocity or force or something, yeah, we we would go ahead and get the decimal of that if it was asking us for the magnitude. So this is our magnitude square root of 53. Our component form is 2 comma 7. Vector operations. So another kind of word that gets introduced with vectors is um, scalar. A scalar is just a single number as opposed to a vector which in component form has two numbers, an x value and a y value. So there's a difference there. Like Things like speed are scalars because it's just a number. But if we actually talk about the velocity of something that has both a magnitude and a direction, that's a vector. We can do a couple operations. We can actually do another one that we'll do in the next section. But for now, there's a couple operations we can do with vectors. The first one is vector addition. So that's this right here, that the sum, which we would call the resultant of the vectors u and v is the vector u plus v, and we literally take the x values of our vectors and add them together, and the y values of our vectors and add them together. So basically adding two vectors together, it's like you're adding like terms. You're adding your x values, you're adding your y values. That gives you a new vector that's the resultant of the original two vectors. 
we can also do what's called scalar multiplication. Okay, I can't take two vectors and multiply them together, but I can take a single vector, u here, and I can um, multiply it by a scalar k. And it basically is like the distributive property that if I do k times u1 comma u2, it just gets uh, distributed to both of those two things. Okay, so. Let's do some examples of that. Let's find the component form of the indicated vector on each of these. This first one we have u and v, and it wants us to find u plus v. So if I'm finding u plus v, then I'm literally going to take the x values and add them together, and the y values and add them together. Kind of the opposite of the whole head minus tails rule thing that we talked about earlier. So that gives me 1 comma 11 as the resultant vector of that. Okay, then if I want to do this next one, we're finding 5 times u. u is negative 6, negative 2, and so 5u, I'm literally going to multiply this vector by 5, and that gives me negative 30, comma, negative 10. That's my answer. And then if I want to get a little bit more complicated here on this last one, we have two vectors, u and v, again. But now we're doing 8u minus 5v. So this is asking us to subtract, but we really are only at, allowed to do two things, scalar multiplication and vector addition. So what we're really going to do is we're going to take 8 times 5 comma 6. We're going to do plus a negative 5 comma negative 7 comma 2. And I mean, you can really think of it either way, just technically, like if you want to get technical, we're really not subtracting these vectors. We're adding them. We're adding a negative of it. So 8 times 5 comma 6 would give me 40 comma 48. That was not a very good arrow brace right there. Uh, negative 5 times negative 7, okay, we're adding between these, is 35 comma negative 10. Okay, and so now that we've done the multiplication part, we can add the two vectors together. So this is 40 plus 35, which is 75. 48 minus 10 is 38. So our answer is 75 comma 38. Okay, so basically right now, at least, that's kind of the operations that we can do. Let's think about what is actually happening when we do those things. So let's talk about if we're adding two vectors together. Let's say that we've got a vector that starts here. So I have a computer, so I'm going to be smart about this and not have ridiculously awful lines, hopefully. So if we have two vectors. So one is starting at 0, 0 and going to, let's say, 2 comma 5, and the other one, we have it in component form, right? So the other one starts at 0, 0, and it comes down here to um, 3 comma negative 4. Okay, so let's say that we want to add these two vectors together, okay? The easiest way to do that visually is to say, let's take the second vector and let's put its initial point at the terminal point of our first vector. Okay, and so if I'm going this direction and then I'm adding to it a vector going this direction, the resultant vector, okay, is this vector from the starting initial point of the first one to the terminal point of the last one. Okay, when I add these two vectors together, if I do it in component form, I'm going to get this vector that basically completes this triangle. Okay, that's what's happening when we are adding vectors together. So let's talk about if I'm multiplying a vector, scalar multiplication. I'm actually going to talk about this uh, couple things here. So if I have 
this vector 1 comma 2 and I want to multiply that vector by I don't know um, by 3. If I want to multiply that vector by 3 what I'm really doing is I'm making it 3 times its length. Okay, so it's going to go in the exact same direction. It's just going to be 3 times longer than normal. So this is 1 comma 2. If I multiply both of those by 3, I get 3 comma 6. It's also, though, it's also like if I had 1 comma 2 and then I just kept stacking vectors that were 1 comma 2 until I got, okay, whatever number I was going for there. Right, so I was trying to get 3 of these vectors. Okay, so that's how long it is. The other idea with scalar multiplication is if I multiply by a negative, okay, if I take this, the original vector we had, 1 comma 2, if I multiply that by a negative, what I'm really doing is say, let's talk about the exact same vector just headed the opposite direction so that our two vectors would really make a straight line. Okay, going in opposite directions. So if I take this the vector 1 comma 2 multiply by a negative, it changes both of those values to a negative 1 and a negative 2. So it makes it go in completely the opposite direction. Okay, so what do we have next? Okay, unit vectors. I'm going to go ahead and break up the video. So this is the end of the first part.